I remember when I was very small, like my first experience or introduction with Vedic mantras was when I was small. Once my father, he was playing a cassette and I was also, I listened to it and it was so nice. And I asked him, I said, no, what is this? It was a language I didn't know. And so he said, these are some Sanskrit mantras. Someone was chanting and, and it was amazing. And I found it very nice. So I used to listen to it sometimes. And then uh, when I grew older in school, when we learned a little bit about traditions from the East, like Hinduism, Buddhism, um, different traditions, I found it again very interesting, very fascinating. I was interested in philosophy, but I found that the Eastern philosophy was much more uh, somehow much more interesting and also much more practical. You know, it was not to me. It felt like the whatever I have read and studied of the Western philosophy, it was more just intellectual and concepts and somehow the Eastern philosophy felt much more practical, much more relevant and connected to reality, to our world of experience and in a way useful also. So then uh, after I finishing high school, before going to university, I decided I'll go to India for a few months to travel around and also see some of these things for myself. And I came, I started my journey here in the in our Bangalore ashram. I thought I will do one of the Art of Living courses and then go from here. And every Monday here we have, uh, they perform the Rudra Puja. It's a ceremony where they chant some of the Vedic mantras and for me that was such an amazing experience. I still remember it was something completely new. But then I just sat there and the whole Ceremony takes about one and a half hours, but I just sit there and close my eyes and effortlessly meditation will happen. So suddenly, when again I become aware, suddenly it's half an hour, one hour later, one and a half hours later, and I would not even feel the time, you know. Meditation would happen so effortlessly and would feel so fresh, so energized. So that kindled a curiosity in me. And I wanted to learn more, that I want to find out how, how it works. And I thought I also would love to learn some of these chanting, some of these things. And uh, then after finishing university, when I had a chance to come here uh, and to join as one of the full-time volunteers, this was one of my intentions and I had a good fortune also that I was given the opportunity to learn some of these things. and. I had a chance to learn this Rudra Puja, to learn the chanting and throughout these last five years where I had a chance to regularly chant the mantras, perform some of the ceremonies, um, every time again it amazes me to see the effect of this. Even though in a way it is so logical. If you look at what mind is, what consciousness is, you know, basically it is energy. And every thought, every word, everything, it is a vibration in that energy. So that energy which is there in us, it is vibrating in some way. And sometimes, you no, know, when we hear a certain noise, a certain sound, like someone pulls their nails over the blackboard, this is very uncomfortable. You know? We can feel that this is a vibration which is, you know, we don't feel good, we don't feel nice. The same way, even if you go to a place where people might have had a fight or where people are shouting or they might have nothing to do with you but still you don't feel nice you don't feel good and when you go to a place where there is a beautiful you know, where it's a natural place you hear the sounds of the birds or the sound of a small river or you feel so nice there's such a soothing effect and the same way I found that I've experienced that these certain vibrations the what they call the mantras the chanting it has a definite and very benevolent, beneficial effect on our state of mind. So even, I have experienced also where people, for example, are very restless or very stressed or even just sitting quietly and chanting a few of the mantras has a very beneficial effect on everybody there, everybody present there. So this is a, an interesting thing and 
I have a feeling also that in the near future there will be much more research also on this, how this can be utilized in a much wider way. You know, it is said in the ancient times there is a branch of Ayurveda, you know, the traditional Vedic science of medicine, where one of the systems which was used, systems of medicine, to heal people, to cure many diseases, many things, was with the use of sounds, the use of mantras. So they have specific definite mantras which are used to have a certain effect on specific organs in the body, specific systems in the body, specific aspects of the mind. So again, this is something which still only very few people in today's world have mastered. So that would be a challenge also to find out those people and they also have to be ready to share this knowledge with us. But it would be fascinating to explore this more, I think. That just on the level of sound, on the level of vibration, to see how we can use it to cure certain imbalances in the body, certain diseases in the body and in the mind also.